Hello and welcome back to my channel. So today we are going to be making this dress. It is my first ever PDF pattern, the Katarina dress. If you want to sew along, you can buy this pattern over on my Etsy shop. I will leave the link and the details in the description bar and the comments below if you fancy having a go. These are the things that you're going to need. Your cut out fabric pieces and lining, matching thread, one centimeter wide elastic, some fusible interfacing strips. You can get ready-made ones, but if you don't have that, you can actually cut it out from a larger piece. A long zipper, at least 10 inches. I'm using an invisible zipper, but you can use any type you like. And two buttons. There are other fastenings that you can use, but for this video, I'll be making self-covered buttons. So the first thing we're going to do is stay stitch the back cutout neckline and the center front neckline at six millimeters. And then we're gonna do another stay stitch at the center front sides at 1.3 centimeters. This will help us with the princess seam. On the center front, clip into the side curves, cutting right up to the stay stitch line, but not through it. Repeat these steps for your lining pieces. Pin the side front piece to the center front starting at the bottom, then at the top, and then the middle notch. Ease the rest of the curve into the center front. The clipped side should allow the center front to stretch a little to match the side piece. It can be a little bit tricky if you are a beginner, but make sure to just take your time, patience, and use lots of pins. Repeat the same process for the other side and you should have something that looks like this. Now you can take it to the machine and sew at 1.5 centimeters or 5 eighths of an inch. Now this is just my preference, but I find that it helps me get really nice smooth seams. I use a basting stitch first, take out the pins, check and see what it looks like. And if it looks good, then I go over the same thing with a normal stitch. So once you've sewn your seams, you can then go ahead and give them a nice trim, make sure they're nice and neat. Um, you can finish the seams if you want to, but because there's a lining, you don't actually have to, just as long as they're nice and trimmed. Then you wanna take it to the ironing board and press the seams towards the side seams. Next, we are going to attach the front and the back pieces right side together at the shoulder and at the side seams. Repeat these steps for your lining. Once you've sewn your seams, make sure you give them a trim and then press them towards the back. Do the exact same thing for your lining. On the pattern, you will see that the back pieces are identical because they're cut in a pair. To create an overlap so that you can fasten the neck, you'll need to trim off the excess from the right side. It should be marked on the pattern so you can use it as your guide of where to cut. Make sure you also cut the lining too. Time to work on the skirt. So the first thing you're going to do with your skirt is to mark and pin the darts in the front and also the back skirt pieces. You can then go ahead and sew, press them towards the side seams. Repeat for your lining. Next, we are going to attach the skirt front and back right sides together at the side seams. Trim your seams and then press towards the back and then repeat again for your lining. So now we're gonna attach the bodice to the skirt. So grab your bodice and place it over the skirt, right sides facing at the waist seam. Pin together, matching the front darts to the princess seam and side seam to side seam. Stitch together at 1.5 centimeters or 5 eighths of an inch. Trim the seam and then press the seam down towards the skirt. Repeat all these steps for the lining. 
So at this point you should have two almost dresses. I'm going to put the zip in now and this bit is completely optional with how you want to put in the zip and how long your zipper should be. Please bear in mind though that the longer the zipper opening then the more space you have for your bum. In this video I'm going to measure down 11 inches 28 centimeters from the center back and mark it with a notch. This is where my zipper is going to stop. Make sure to mark both sides of the skirt. Using your interfacing strips, fuse the seam allowances from the center back down, stopping at the notch. Do this on the right side of the fabric, taking extra care to make sure that the interfacing does not go over the 1.5 centimeter seam line. It should look something like this when you're done. Next, we are going to close up the back of the skirt. Placing the center back right sides together, pin down from the notch towards the hem of the skirt. Sew with a 1.5 cm seam. Then sew a basting stitch going from the notch upwards towards the top. Press the seams open. Repeat all these steps for your lining. Place the zipper on the center of the basted seam. Line up the top of the zipper tape with the top of the back opening. Pin the zip to the seam allowance only. Pin down both sides of the zipper tape, stopping at the notch. Next, either hand-based or machine-based the zipper tape to the seam allowance, making sure that the zipper is centered on the seam. Once the zip is securely in place, you can open up the basting stitches and then open up the zipper. Once you have opened the zip, you can flip out the seam allowances and sew a straight stitch as close to the zipper teeth as possible. Start at the top of the zip and go down as far as you can get to the zipper base. You can use a normal zipper foot and a invisible zipper foot for this part. It doesn't matter which, both will give you really good results. Repeat this for both sides of the zip. Once you have stitched the zipper to the dress, it should look like this. Since we use the long zip, place a pin at the notch and cut off the excess a few centimeters away. You can either hand stitch or machine stitch a few stitches over the zipper teeth to stop the zip from opening all the way. This is how your lining should be looking. It's pretty much the same as the main dress but without the zip and without the interfacing. So this pattern includes rouleau loops for the neck fastening. This is completely optional. You can use whatever fastening you like for the neck, but for this video, we're going to make the loops. Start by folding the strip in half lengthways, right sides facing and pin together. Sew a straight seam at six millimeters or a quarter inch from the raw edge. Trim the seam. Using a loop turner, turn the tube to the right side. Cut into two equal pieces. So now we are going to attach the lining to the main dress. So starting with the lining, you want to place the main dress inside the lining so that the right sides of the main dress and the right sides of the lining are facing each other. Flip out the seam allowances for the zipper and pin that to the lining. Pin all the way down the zipper tape till you get to the base. Repeat for the other side of the zipper. Pin the rest of the lining to the dress, making sure to match the necklines, shoulder seams and neck fastenings with each other. When you get to the left side of the neck fastening, add your rouleau loops. Using the center back markings on the pattern, position the loops so that they are about 1.5 centimeters over the center back line. The loop head should be facing inwards towards the shoulder. Pin or baste in place on the right side of the main dress, then add the lining on top, creating a sandwich effect. Now that everything is pinned, it's time to sew. Starting at the base of the zipper, sew around the pinned edge at 1.5 centimeters. When you get to a corner, keep the needle down and pivot the dress so that you have clean corners. You might not be able to sew 1.5 centimeter on the zipper part, but sew as close to the zipper teeth as you can get. Keep sewing all the way round until you reach the other side of the zipper. 
So this is what it should look like once you have sewn the lining to the dress. Next, you want to trim all of the seams, clip the corners and snip into all of the curved seams, especially the back cutout, so that you can have smooth lines when you turn it to the right side. Okay, so now is a really good time to turn it to the right side, see how your loops turned out, uh, check the fit, if there's anything that you want to change, now is a good time to do it while the lining is still very much open. So next thing we're going to do is some understitching. This will prevent the lining from rolling forward so that you can see it. We wanna keep it on the inside. So to do this, you wanna open out your lining and dress. And then what you're going to do is press the seam towards the lining. Then you can take it to the machine and stitch as close as you can on the lining side, essentially securing the seam on that side. It sounds complicated, but it's it's quite simple and hopefully the video shows you that. There will also be some spots that you can't get to, like the neck fastenings, just sew as far as you can on each side and that should be fine. Next, sew a basting stitch around the sleeve openings to keep the lining and the dress together. On the top of the sleeve, you want to sew two rows of basting stitches within the seam allowance from side notch to side notch. This is so that we can gather later. Next, fold the sleeve in half, right sides together, and sew a straight stitch at 1.5 centimeters. Trim, press, and then finish the seam. Sleeves are unlined, so it is best to finish the edge with either an overlocker, serger, a zigzag stitch, or any other way you decide to finish it, although I didn't for this video. Measure the elastic around your forearm so that it is snug but not uncomfortable. Cut two pieces with a 5mm overlap for sewing. Next we need to make the casing. Turn up the bottom edge 5mm and then turn up again 1.5cm and pin. You want to sew very close to the inside edge leaving about a 1 inch or 2.5cm gap for the insert. Insert the elastic using a safety pin and thread through till you get to the other side. Pull the two ends out and overlap by 5mm, then sew a zigzag stitch across the join to secure. Stretch out the hem to pull the elastic inside and close the gap with a straight stitch. Gather the sleeve cap by pulling on the top threads of the basting stitches. It's time to add the sleeves to the dress, but before we start, we need to make sure that the sleeve is on the right side. You can do this by matching up the notches on the dress with the notches on the sleeve. Start by matching the underarm seam with the sleeve seam and then flip the dress to the inside and pin the rest, making sure that you match all the notches, including the center sleeve with the shoulder seam. Distribute the gathering so that it's evenly gathered between the notches. The underarm should be fairly flat. Sew around the armhole at a 1.5 centimeter seam. So once you've sewn both the sleeves, it should look something like this, nice and gathered up at the shoulder. Next, you want to give it a nice press and then trim and finish the seams on the inside. Okay, so we're almost there. Now it's time to put the ruffle on. A quick note, there are two size ranges for this pattern, sizes four to 16 and sizes 18 to 30. The 18 to 30 range has an extra pattern piece for the ruffle, but don't worry, I'll explain what to do with those pieces shortly. So in all sizes, you need to pin the short ends together to create a strip. For the four to 16 range, it will only be two pieces to sew together, but for the 18 to 30, it will be four. 
two center pieces and two side pieces. You will need to put them together in an order. So side piece, center piece, side piece, and then center piece, all in one strip. So all the seams at 1.5 centimeters, then trim, press, and finish. So two basting stitches within the seam allowances along the top of the strip, leaving a 1.5 centimeter gap at the beginning and the end of the strip. Pin and sew the two remaining ends together at a 1.5 cm seam, making a circle. Make sure to keep the long basting threads out of the way, trim, press and finish the seam, but do not trim the basting threads. We need those for gathering. Before we gather the ruffle, let's hem it. It's easier to do it now than to do it later when it's already ruffled. Feel free to hem this any way that you like. I just did a simple double turned hem. So once you have hemmed and pressed your ruffle, it's now time to start gathering your ruffle. Now, the ruffle is pretty big, so I'm not gonna lie, it, it will take a little bit of time. If you have something like a ruffler foot, it will definitely make things a lot easier, but doing it this way allows you to be able to adjust the ruffles to the size of the skirt. Pin the ruffle to the bottom of the dress, right sides facing. For the four to 16 size range, you can match the side seams of the ruffle with the side seams of the dress and distribute the gathers evenly. For the size 18 to 13 range, you will need to make sure that the center front and the center back of the ruffle matches with the center front and the center back of the dress and distribute evenly from there. At this point, you also have a choice to either pin the ruffle to the dress and the lining or to leave the lining free. If you choose to leave the lining free, then you also need to hem the lining. Sew the ruffle to the dress at a 1.5 cm seam. Trim and then press the seam up towards the dress. Finish with a serger, overlocker or a zigzag stitch. Lastly, to keep the ruffle from flipping up, pin the seam allowance in place and then flip to the right sides and top stitch in the seam line to secure it in place. This is called stitching in the ditch. So you can use any fastening for the neck, like I said before, but I chose to use self-covered buttons. So here is me just making them. Once you have your buttons, then you want to mark the placement of where you're going to sew them by overlapping the loop side on top of where the buttons will be. Mark with a pin and then you can sew your buttons in that place. And that's it. Once you've done that, you have finished. You've got yourself a brand new Katarina dress. And that is the end of the sew along. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoy your brand new dress. And if you manage to make one, don't forget to tag your makes so that I can see what you guys have been making. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.